All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin our lecture for today. And today we want to look at hypothesis testing. We want to look at the one sample hypothesis. One sample. However, before we start everything, I would want you to give in some notes down in your notebook. Okay. And that has to do in summary the steps in hypothesis testing. those steps because that's what we're dealing with the course of the the steps hello, hello doc yes your voice seems to go very low and come back again it's I think like three four times so let's look at the steps the first there are four main things I wanted to summarize the first one is that formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. Formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. That's the first one. Okay, you come to understand the null and the alternative. The second thing is to compute the test statistic. Compute the test statistic. and compare it, compare it with a critical value, compare it with a critical value. That is step two. Step three is to find the p-value find the p-value and compare it with alpha. Find the p-value and compare it with alpha. Finally, conclude, conclude statistically and Practically, conclude statistically and practically. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've gotten the steps in hypothesis testing. Okay. Now let's take the first one, the null and the alternative hypothesis. What is that? Well, the null hypothesis has to do with some authority that you have in making a statement about a population parameter. That population parameter can be the average, which is made up of the mean, the median, and the mode. It can also be the variance or the standard deviation. I can make a statement that the NDC won the last election. And then the Electoral Commission can make a statement that the NDC won the last election. Which one is likely to shake the nation? Who can raise a hand and tell me? Which one of these statements is likely to shake the nation and why? Which one? Um, the Electoral Commission's one will shake the nation because of the, the institution. They are the ones responsible for it. And they are, They've been okay. given the mandates by the constitution. So it's their good. So their they have what? The nation, not you. They have what? They have the power, say. They have the power. They have, they have the, the authority. They have the power. They have the authority. And good. Okay. So when you have a power and authority and experience in something, you make that statement. And that statement you make is known as the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is usually represented by H naught, the null hypothesis. Okay. There are so many hypotheses that can be made. For example, some people make the hypothesis. They hypothesize that income has a positive effect on consumption. But that statement may not be true unless you've subjected it to statistical torture and rigorous analysis. The null hypothesis can be that 
socially responsible firms are more profitable. Now, these hypotheses can be converted into questions. Okay, and I just did one. Are socially responsible firms more profitable? And so these are known as the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is represented by HA. The alternative is HA. And the reason why it is said to be the alternative is that it is usually the one that can be said by anybody who has no particular authority to say that. But then that person or that thing wants to challenge the original authority. And so because he wants to challenge the original authority, he makes that second statement. So the first thing you want to note is that there is a null hypothesis and there is an alternative. Your job is to learn how to formulate these hypotheses. How do you formulate them? Now, before you can master how you formulate these hypotheses, there are a few things that you want to note. And the first thing you want to note has to do with the symbols that are used in hypothesis testing. The symbols that are used in hypothesis testing. There are five, six main symbols. First symbol, and these are mathematical symbols that we know of. You have less than. And before I proceed, I want to ask you, what is the opposite of less than? What is the opposite? And please don't speak English, speak statistics, speak mathematics. Because what is true in normal English grammar <laughs> might not be true in statistical language. What is the opposite? Statistically speaking, what is the opposite of less than? Who can take a guess? Cynthia. Oh my God. This is uh, greater than. Okay. So the opposite of less than is not greater than, statistically speaking. The opposite of less than is not greater than. Actually, the opposite of less than is greater or equal to. I'm going to explain why. The opposite of greater than is less or equal to. And the opposite of equal to is not equal to. That one you know. Now let's explain why the first one is the case. If you say that she is less than 30 years, if you make a statement that she's less than 30 years, the opposite will not be she's greater than 30 years. No, this is not the opposite. And why? And the reason why it cannot be is that when you say that the opposite is greater than 30, it means that where would 30 be on the number line? If she's less than 30 and its opposite is she's greater than 30, then 30 will not be counted because it's either below or above. So for 30 to be counted numerically, she has to be greater or equal to 30. So that everything is counted, every number is counted in the two statements. So statistically speaking, the opposite of less than is greater or equal to. If you are not clear, you raise up your hands or you type your question. Okay. Now, these symbols that I just looked at, these four main symbols that I just looked at, okay, they are known as one tail, one tail, one tail testing. They are used for one tail testing. And then these ones, which are just these two, are known as two tail testing, two tail. Why is that so? Because when you say that she is less than, and normally we use the one part of the symbol, not the opposite, but when you make a statement that she's less than 30, the possible answers are just below 30. She can never be, and that is just one way, below 30. It cannot be below 30 and above 30. 
The possible answers for she's been less than 30 are just one direction. There's just one way. And the same thing goes with the she's greater than 30. However, when you make statements like she is not, and I'm talking about this one, which is the opposite of the other one, she is not equal to 30. She's not 30. She's not 30 years. When you make such a statement, the possible answers are either she's above 30 or she's below 30. I'm sure you get that. And so the direction are two directions. And therefore, these symbols are called two tail in hypothesis testing. I think it's fair. It's cool. However, English is a very strange little grammar because in the English language, this symbol of less than or greater than, these two symbols can be, can be worded in different ways and you will still need these symbols to represent them. For example, I just use a symbol, a statement, a word that she's above 30. Which of these symbols will I use to represent above? Look at Tom. Which of these symbols will I use to represent above? Raise your hand. Greater than. No. Sorry. Raise your hand and let me know. Which of these symbols is used to represent above? Jolly. Greater than 30. Greater than. So that symbol is greater than. So what I'm going to do is to give you a couple of examples. And then your job is to tell me when I mention the English word, you tell me which of these symbols is going to represent. Okay. So let's take these English words. The first one, which is greater than, is simple because it's also greater than. So that one, there's no problem at all with that. Greater than is greater than. What symbol, who can tell me what symbol is below? Below. What symbol is below? I'm less than. Less than. Who can tell me what symbol is beyond? And please don't think you get everything correct because some of them are a bit confusing. What symbol is beyond? I need a hand raise. Habana? Greater than. Greater than. Now, whilst he's mentioning the answers, your job is to note them down because you need them pretty soon. Now, be careful with this one. What symbol is not fewer than? Not fewer than. What symbol is that? You have to take it slowly. You sometimes you even have to um, excuse yourself from the not and deal with the other one, which is fewer than. You put a symbol for fewer than down. Then you ask yourself, what is the opposite of that? Because its opposite is a not. This opposite is a not, and that will give you the thing. So what is a, what is a symbol for not fewer than? Not fewer than. What symbol is that? Samuel. Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to is the right answer. And you use the approach I said. So first of all, fewer than is less than. And this opportunity is greater than or equal to. So when you do it like that, you are going to get everything correct. Now let's see. What symbol is not above? Not above. Roland. Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to is the correct one. What symbol is better than? You can tell us. Better than. Roland. Uh, is it? Uh, one, two, three, four. Better than, better. You can think about it. We'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah. What symbol is better than? Anybody? What symbol is better than? Ransford. So, uh, oh, it is uh, greater than. It's greater than. Let's move on. What symbol is worse than? Worse than. Ransford. Worse than. Uh, okay, uh, less than. 
What symbol is at least? At least. Good. What symbol is at least? I tend to use the hand that have been raised, okay, before I call the person. Um, I think it's greater than or equal to. It's greater than or equal to. That's good. Okay, note it down because you need these things very soon. What symbol is at most? At most, Roland. Less than or equal to. Thank you. What symbol is not at least? Not at least. Not at least. Not at least. What symbol is that? Yes, Roland. Would it be less than? No. What symbol is not? Less than. No. Yes, yeah, you're right. Greater than or equal to? Not at least is not greater than or equal to. What symbol is not at least? Not at least. Roland. Sir, um... Roland, don't worry, your hand was up, which it wasn't supposed to be up. Samuel. Greater than. No, that's not greater than. What symbol is not at least? Samuel. What symbol is that? Let me try. Go ahead. Will it be equal to? No. It will never be equal to because if you look at the symbols on top, there's nothing called equal to them. Eric. Less than. It's less than. Now, when the first person said less, I deliberately said no because I wanted to be sure that most of you are not copying, okay? Because the first thing you got to do is to learn and master what at least is. And some few minutes ago, we indicated what at least is. We mentioned that at least is greater or equal to. That's if you wrote it down. And so it's opposite to be less than. What symbol is not younger than? Sir, no. Please, can I ask a question, please? Yes. Sir, uh, can you come again with regards to that piece? You said it was uh, less than or equal to. No, I didn't. What is at least? So, in your view, what is at least? At least uh, greater than or equal to. That's it. So, what do you think is the opposite of that? So if so if uh, you said that when we are doing the this thing, don't, don't worry about what I said. Not tell me what. So it, okay. So what I no. from what I am thinking, if at least is greater than or equal to, then uh, you are thinking. People who answer like this are thinking. So let me give you time to think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the is thinking. Okay, but I want you to think ahead to come and tell us. If at least is greater or equal to, and I just told you the opposite of every symbol, okay, then the opposite of at least is not at least, which is less than. Okay, now let's move on. Which symbol is not younger than? What symbol is not younger than? Okay, Bransford. No, uh, it is greater than or equal to. All right, that's it. Now, the rest of you who don't know, you just put that answer down, you go and think through it. Okay, so those are the symbols for one tail. Now, let's go to the two tail. There are some English words that stand for two tail. The first and the easiest one is not equal to, which is for this symbol, not equal to. Let's go to the English word, not different from. What symbol is that? not different from. 
It's just one of these two symbols. What is not different from? Roland. It's equal to. Okay. What is differs from? What symbol is differs from? Differs from someone. Not equal to. Thank you. What symbol is the same as? The same as. Mina. Equal to. Equal to. What symbol is does not vary from? Does not vary from. What symbol is that? Does not vary from. Mina. 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 Not equal to. Not equal to. I'll call you as long as your hand is up. Okay, so if you are not ready, just put your hand. What symbol is on? What symbol is on? What symbol is on, Pabna? Sir, please, that does not vary from, I thought it was equal to. It is? Yes, I was yeah. to That's what I was thinking. But she mentioned not equal to. I wanted some clarification. That's not very from is equal to. Okay. So on is equal to, off is equal to, was is equal to. Okay, so keep note of all of these. All right. So now we are ready to rock and roll. At this stage, we are going to learn how to formulate hypothesis. And I'm going to learn, teach you how to formulate hypothesis because you're going to do several of them on your own right now. There's a first step. In a statement will be made. Yours is to formulate the statement into a statistical. I'm going to give you the steps, a simple way of dealing with it. Okay, because once you know the simple way of dealing with it, you should be able to know the next ways of working. So the first thing you have to notice that even before you formulate a hypothesis, write something called your mean. Mu represents the mean. Mu represents the mean. Roland, your microphone keeps going up so many times. I don't know why, and there's a noise in your background. So if you can just ensure that your microphone is off most of the time for me, it be the best. Okay. Please, it's off. I don't know where you're getting it. It keeps going on. So please, just, just be conscious of it. Mina, what's your question? Doc, please, I'm OK. So the first thing you want to note is that the mu, you write the mu always. When you're formulating hypothesis, you write the mu. Then after writing the mu, you write a number, OK? And you will notice this number in the storyline. You will notice the number in the storyline. And so you put that number down. Okay, you write a number. And then add a unit of measurement to that number. And then you write a mu again. And then you write a number in question. And then add a unit of measurement to that number. Okay. Now, yours is to bring a symbol in between the mu, the Greek letter mu, which is the mean, and the number you've written. The symbol will also be given to you in the story. So let's say the symbol you the symbol is less than or greater than or equal to or anything. Okay? You write that symbol here. Once you've written the symbol in there, okay. Once you've written the symbol here, then you it's opposite. You write the opposite of the symbol there for the second one. So as an example, if the first symbol is less than, then its opposite symbol should be greater than or equal to. If the first symbol is not equal to, its opposite to be equal to. That's it in that manner. Once you've done that finish, you bring a colon in front of the first one, and then you also bring a colon in front of the second one. 
Then at that stage, you step back and breathe in. And then you tell yourself, ask yourself, with these two symbols, which one has some level of equality? Because you are going to know that the one with some level of equality, that is the one which is always the null hypothesis. Now let's take these two symbols as an example. Looking at these two symbols here, which one has some level of equality, the down or the top? The top or the down one? Who can tell me? Which one has some level of equality? The top one or the down one? Samo. The down one. The down one. Once you now know that the down one has is the one with some level of equality, then you attach the null hypothesis to that. And then the alternative hypothesis will go to the other one. Now, here's the reason. The null hypothesis always has some level of equality in it. Write it down, you forget it. The null hypothesis always has some level of equality in it. So that is the first clue. An example is more efficacious than precept. So I'm just gonna stop those uh, precepts and then just give you an example. So we're gonna do it together. So let's take this example here. Next Cafe Ghana claims that since the population mean filling weight is at least three pounds per can, consumers' rights are protected. So that is a statement. You got to start writing that statement by putting this down. You write the mean, which is a mu symbol, and then you write a number, which is in the story. Okay, and then add the unit of measurement. So what is the number that you have to write and then its unit of measurement? What is the number you have to write and its unit of measurement? Roland. It's three, three, L, three pounds, yeah. Three pounds. So you write three pounds, just like, you know, you have just indicated that. You write three pounds. You write three pounds like that. And then you write the same thing below, okay, three pounds per can. Then you ask yourself that in that sentence, which word is a symbolic word that was mentioned? Who can tell me? Which word is a symbolic word that was mentioned? Roland? At least. What is a symbol? What is a symbol for at least? At least. Greater than or equal. Greater than or equal. Two people are greater than or equal. And I have not called them. Okay. That's a problem. It's greater than or equal. <laughs> Two people are talking and I haven't called them. Okay. And I think the first mistake was by Edith. She was talking into the air. You raise your hand and I call you. Yes, Edith. He said greater than or equal to, but I wasn't the one talking, just to clarify, please. Okay, so mute yourself. Yes, that's correct. Greater than or equal to. Okay. Greater than or equal to is the right answer because that is the symbol for at least. So you put that in the middle. Okay. Once you write that, you put that in the middle here. And then you now ask yourself once again, what is the opposite of that? So what is the opposite of greater than or equal to? I think everybody knows, okay? Everybody knows easily, and that is this. Then you step back and you bring a colon in front of each of these symbols. You bring a colon in front of each of them. Then you ask yourself, which one has some level of equality? Because that is a null hypothesis. So who can tell me which one is a null hypothesis? The top or the down? Who can tell me? Waku, the top or the down? The top. The top. And so you write H not for the top, and then H A becomes automatically the alternative hypothesis. Ladies and gentlemen, what I just did, what I just did is known as formulating the now and the alternative hypothesis. 
Can you do one? If I give you one. We are going to do some three different examples right now because that will help me to know that you have a full understanding of what just happened. Okay. So let's take an example and then let's rock and roll. So these are the answers for that. So I want you all to do this for me. When you are done, you tell me that you are done and then you walk me through it and I'll write. Max Flight uses a high technology manufacturing process to produce golf balls with a mean drive. What is the null and the alternative hypothesis? Remember, mathematics is a pattern. If you change the pattern in the way I give you, you will miss something. So use that same pattern. Who is ready to show us his answer? Rola. Um, I'm going to just move to the next page there and then you tell us what you have. Yes, go ahead. H not will be mu, um, the mu will be equal to 295. Right, that's not how you've written your answer, you've analyzed it all already, right? Yes, please. Because normally that is not how you go about it. Normally, okay. There's a step-by-step -step procedure I taught you. But I'm just hoping that you've gone through that step-by-step -step procedure and you are telling us your answer. Continue. Yes, sir. And then H no, H A will be mu is not equal to 295. Okay, since he's writing all of the answers. So he says, you see, you are wrong because you didn't bring the colon. You didn't bring the colon. So H naught column is not is equal to this. You did, you did, I didn't hear you mentioning column when you were saying the second one. That is why normally okay. you need to walk to write it and then walk through exactly what you've written. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, but I want to you know exactly what you do, so that's fine. This is it. This is how you formulate the null and alternative hypothesis for that very question. Okay. Now let's take another example. Let's take, and be careful here. According to the CEO, okay, according to the CEO, the new BMW car can run more than 25 miles per gallon. The new BMW car can run more than 24 miles per gallon. Write an all an alternative hypothesis. And then let me see. Write the null and alternative hypothesis, and let me see. If you are done, let me know. You walk us straight into how you do it. As you say it, I'll be writing it. As you say it, I'll then be writing it. Make sure you are taking part of this. Make sure you are part of this. Make sure you are letting somebody check your answer. Make sure you are contributing to this class so that you would have gained your class participation because there will be class participation every day we meet for this. So it's important that you are taking part of the whole thing. All right, Rola. Rola, walk us through it. Okay. Mew is greater than 24 and the mu is less than or equal to 24. So the semicolon H naught for the first one and then the semicolon H A for the second one. Like this. Yes, sir. All right, okay. That's wrong. You're wrong. Thank you for trying that person. Please don't share the answer because I will have to use talking. So you've no. done your part. You, you, you can just relax yourself. And then who can now take the next one for us? Joseph, whoever. The new 
greater than 24 miles and then mu le less than or equal to 24 miles. Since uh, less than or equal to 24 uh, miles, then the, you bring the colon I clean from in front of the... What do I clean? Let me know. Is the Please come again. Please, nobody should the, tell to. The, What do I clean, which is not correct? Uh, uh, okay. So this one, uh, the second one. The second one. We, we just transpose them. Let's transpose them. Just mention whatever you see on the screen and tell me which one I should just okay. erase. That's all. The, the alternative hypothesis should go for null hypothesis. When you say alternative hypothesis, you go for you haven't really spoken. We, we, what what I, I'm saying is that. What, what should I delete? Yes, delete mu, first one and the second one. Delete greater than, delete less than, delete. Okay. Be clear. Okay, okay. So, okay, so the the first one greater than, let's delete that one. So I should delete, <laughs> I should delete this one. Then we, yes. Then let's put uh, less than or equal to. Okay. Less than or equal to. Then we delete uh, equal to for the second one. I should delete the less than or equal to. We put the greater than here. That's all. Is I should delete equal to. So I deleted the equal to. Then we put greater than here. That's all. <laughs> okay. All right. So I should put greater than like this. Yes, that's all. That's all. Yes. Okay. Any other? Any other comment from anybody? Joseph. Sir, so, so question. Yes, John. Does the order matter? No, it doesn't. Okay. Thank you. So this is how it's supposed to be. This is the correct way it's supposed to be. However, this bottom one can come first. There's no problem. Okay. So you've got to master how to learn because if it was in any exam situation, just getting this wrong, everything will be zero. Just this. That's why I'm taking a bit of time to walk you through it. Okay. Let's take another example. I believe in examples because examples is more Let's take this one. Um, Ghana Telecom manager thinks that customer monthly cell phone bill average not at most 52 CDs. I want you to write a null and alternative hypothesis. And then you raise your hand and walk us through. Well, now, and we're has been able to crack something. He is ready to show the world that he was made out of stone. Okay. So this one is supposed to be the key symbol is the most important thing. The key symbol is at most. That's your focus. Forget about the not is the at most. And the symbol for at most is less or equal to. Less or equal to. Less or equal to. So opposite to be greater than. Greater than. The rest is history. Now less or equal to, and then greater than. The less or equal to will be the now because it carries some level of equality. There are several others that you have in there. Slide that I want you to go and check all of them. At this stage, we are ready to now take a typical example with a full-blown story, and then you can now catch it. We'll go through all the steps in hypothesis testing, and then. So this is a full-blown project work. Okay, this is something I've done already for years, and we are going to use it to formulate the hypothesis and come up with a completely 
So we are going to start this. We're going to solve it together. We're going to work it together. And we're going to be able to use it to understand all the four steps in our hypothesis test. Who will do the entire reading for us? Anybody want to do that? Mina? Suppose that you are thinking of taking over an SME. The current owner claim the weekly turnover of each existing SME is not different from 5,000 Ghana CD. And at, and, at, and at this level, you are willing to take on the SME. You'll be, you would be more cautious if the turnover is below this figure. You examine the books of 26 SMEs chosen at random and find that the average turnover was 4,900 Ghana cities with standard deviation, 280 Ghana cities. What would you do? Okay, thank you. So that statement, what would you do? What is he trying to ask you? Who can tell us? That statement, what would you do? What does that mean? What is that question? What does that question really mean? What does that question really mean by what would you do? Yeah, I really wanted to think about this because if you are able to think about this, you are able to crack what we are about to do. This is a practical meaning of what we are doing. What would you do? What does that mean? Abna? Yeah, Doc, I think um, it's saying that, are you going to take over Will you take over the SME or not? Good. Should you take over the SME or not? Taking over the SME means what? Someone. Okay, so what, you, what from my understanding is that you're trying to examine an SME and then you are told that um, the, the existing takeover, so the standard is here 5,000. And the current SME is recording 4,900. But then there's a standard deviation, which is more like a margin of error of 280. So then, is this a very good business? Is what a very good business? What are you doing here? What is your work to do? You, what is what, what do you have to do? At the end of the day, what you are you trying to do? You want to find out whether it's uh, the it's, it's meeting the 500 or the, it's the amount of 4,900 is reasonable no, in terms of the no. standard 500, 5,000. Yeah. No, the, the key reason why you are doing everything here, what is your goal? At the end of the day, what's your goal, Cynthia? Taking a decision. <laughs> Taking a decision to do this course eh? <laughs> <laughs> what decision are you taking? Everybody takes decisions. Okay. Let's go to um, uh, Francesca. Okay. <clears throat> so, decision here to, to think whether to take over. Mommy, mommy. All right, okay. Mommy, mommy A. I think the key word, um, this thing I indicated the last time that if you have children around, Doc. it's nice that. No, let me try. I'll read my hand. You don't, it's nice that you excuse us, actually, because the children are going to disturb the class. So it's very important that you don't try to even comment because you know very well your children are going to interact. And this is a professional environment. Okay, and we are recording. And so it will be very, very nice that if you have children, you just stay away from, from talking because you know very well that you are not in a good environment. If you are in a class, you don't have in a good environment. So please, I want us to act professionally on that, you know, because sometimes we hear children crying and calling parents, and that's not healthy. Okay. Yes. Um, no, let me try. I raise my hand. Oh, but I decide to call you, so don't worry. You don't have to say that I should call you because you raise a hand. You have been a number of hands. Let's go to Roland. Roland. Okay, so um, the, decision, the decision here is just to 
I mean, to test and see if what the owner claimed that the turnover is not different from 5,000. All right, okay. If it is. Okay, 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 that's fine. But that, that's, not, that's not the goal. The ultimate goal is not to just test and see if the blah, blah, blah is not, no. That's not the ultimate goal. I want somebody to tell me the ultimate goal about that statement, what would you do? Okay, what is the ultimate? That question, what would you do? That statement, what would you do? What is a do? What is that do? That's my question I'm asking. You can say that um, the goal is to decide and decide, but at the end of the day, what is the goal? Not the decision, what is the goal? Waku, Abigail. Yeah, I'll try. Um, to analyze and see if you can make um, profit out of it. Analyze <laughs> and to see yes. and make profit out of what? Out of, um, out of the um, buying the existing um, SME. That is a thing. The most important point is that the goal is for you to, dis to buy the SME. That is a goal. That statement, what would you do? He's asking you, will you buy the SME? That's it. As to all the analysis, standard deviation, all of those things, they are just statistical language. But the main practical meaning of why we are here is we want to know whether we should buy this company, this SME, or we shouldn't buy this SME. That's the whole idea. Somebody earlier on said takeover. And I said, what do you mean by that? You've got to be clear, practically. And this simple language, you want to know whether to buy the company or not, buy the SME or not. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. Some of you might try to be very statistical without being practical. And I normally do not encourage that. I want you to open your mind and be as practical as possible because the mathematics doesn't give you a lot of things than the practicalities. Okay. So the first thing you are going to do now in this context, the first thing is to identify the elements in the story. The elements in the story. Okay. And the elements in this story are always five. The first one is known as the population mean. You have to find out. The sample mean, you have to find that. The standard deviation, the sample standard deviation, you have to find that. Then the sample size, which is N, let me just uh, write it very well so that you're not confused. The sample size, which is N, and then finally alpha, which is a level of significance. So let's go to the population mean and then the sample mean. I'm interested in that because people always confuse the two. Ladies and gentlemen, the population mean is the average for the entire population of study. So if you are collecting some companies, the entire population of companies become that. Now, and then we have a sample from that. That is known as the mean from that sample is known as the sample mean. The difference between the population mean and the sample mean in a one sample hypothesis like this. The difference is this, and you want to note it down, please. The population standard, the pop, the sample mean has a standard deviation following it. The standard deviation is always following the sample mean. It always comes with the sample mean. But then the population mean has no standard deviation that is following it. And normally, in fact, not normally, always we use, we formulate the hypothesis around the population mean. We formulate a hypothesis around the population. So based on this interpretation, what number is representing the sample mean and what number is representing the population mean? Please note that these numbers are usually closer to each other. But one is a sample mean. When I say closer to each other, I mean the values are closer to each other. But in this context, and always the sample mean has a population, the standard deviation following it. So which value, 
which number is a population mean and which number is a sample mean? John Tay. So the sample mean is 4,900 and Ghana city. And then the population mean could be, should be the 5,000. That is correct. So the population mean is a 5,000, okay, cities. And then the sample mean is a 4,900. And whenever we are going to formulate the Pop the, the null and alternative hypothesis will be using the sum the population mean the 5,000 to be doing that. Okay. Now the reason why he said what he said is because he saw that the standard deviation was following the sample mean. That is why he said what he said. Because he saw that the standard deviation was coming along with the sample mean. Now, who can then tell me? the standard deviation and the sample size. What value is the standard deviation and what value is the sample size? Roland. Roland, Gosway. Sample size is 26. Standard deviation is 280. That is correct. The sample size, the sample standard deviation is 280 because that one comes and it comes along with the sample mean. The sample size is usually collected and we are told that this is 26 companies, 26 companies. Now there is a last one which is known as alpha. Alpha is always the level of significance. Note that down because this point is very important. Alpha is called the level of significance. The level of significance. Okay. It is actually the expected error that is made in any research. The expected error okay, that you can make in any research. Now, expected error. Let me give you a scenario. Anybody who tries to undertake any research is likely to make some mistakes. You are allowed. You are allowed to make some level of mistakes in your research analysis. That's fine. How many mistakes? Well, in terms of percentage, there are three main kinds of mistakes you can make, or three kinds of alpha, or three kinds of level of significance. The first one is known as 1%, then 5%, then 10%. These are the three only, probably only, main you know, level of significance, level of mistakes you are allowed to make. However, the level of mistake you are allowed to make is not the same as the mistake you actually make. Okay. It's not the same. It's not the same. Because the mistake you actually make is what is known as the p-value. Okay. The mistakes you actually make is called the p-value. The p-value is the actual error, is the actual error. So that could be any percentage, any percentage. Now who can tell me which one of these two percentages am I, do I want to be smaller? Is it the P value or the alpha? Which one do I hope that it is smaller? Is it the P value or it is the alpha? If you're able to tell me that, then it means you're following already all that we are discussing. Is it a p-value or is it alpha? Opoku? The p-value. Why? Because that's the actual, I mean, <laughs> the, the actual one, what actually happens, and you're hoping that you are close, you are close as possible. That's okay. So the p-value is actual mistake. So when you make an actual mistake of 0%, that's good because what that means is that you now have a 100% confidence in the result. So normally one minus the alpha is the confidence you know, level or the confidence number that you need to be able to do that. So one minus the alpha 
is a confidence. So the smaller, sorry, one minus the, the p body, okay, or one minus the alpha indeed, because the p body is also an alpha, but that is the actual, whereas the alpha is expected. Okay. So at the end of the day, we are going to understand these two. Okay, so the first thing you have done is that you've been able to address concerns regarding, you know, identify the elements in the question that you handle. Identify the elements, which is what we've done. Now, we need to go to the steps in hypothesis testing. The first step in hypothesis testing is to formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. And we now know what the population mean is. So go to the storyline and tell me how you would formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. There's a sentence, there's some word, phrase, something that is there that can help you to know what symbol to use and eventually how to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. Who can tell me how do you formulate the null? How do you formulate the alternative hypothesis? I know that whilst I was talking, somebody is probably preparing. So at this stage, you should be fine. Roland. Roland Nomeshi. Yes, sir. The weather is not different from Roland. We can't so, hear you. I'm saying that the word there, the phrase that is not we different. Try. From. What is the key word that is needed? As a not different that from. We need. Roland, it's okay. You can meet us, so we can't hear you. Someone. Not different from. Hello? I can't hear so the same thing, Roland. Um, I think it's the same thing Roland said, not different from. All right. So I can't. So let's let's move on. Okay. Doc, can you hear me? The key word is not different from. But of course, you always Hello, Doc. the not. So we'll be focusing on different. Hello. Okay. That's why we'll be focusing on different from. Now, what's Hello. different from? We know this. So when you are writing the null hypothesis, you start with new okay, space, and then you write 5,000. What symbol is different from? That symbol is not equal to, okay? Of course, you have to write this again. So that symbol is not equal to. I can put it up, I can put it down. And then the opposite is a not, which is equal to. You bring your colon in front of each one of them. The one with some level of equality is a H not. The one without some level of equality is a H A. You have been able to formulate a null and alternative hypothesis, but you got to make sense of what it means. You have to understand in practical things what that means. What is the first one? The first one is saying that the turnover, the weekly turnover is truly 5,000. So go ahead and buy the SME. That's what he's trying to say. The weekly turnover is 5,000. So buy it. The other one is saying that the weekly turnover is not 5,000. So be careful. Be careful of buying. Now, the reason why it is be careful is because even though it can go up or down, because you can't tell exactly the possibility of it going down is what you'll be looking at. The key point is try and understand what you have hypothesized. Try and understand it. And that will help you in your move. OK. Now that we have finished the first step, the second step is, and this is just a reminder, OK? The second step is compute the test statistic compute the test statistic. Now this test statistic is also called the calculated value, the calculated value. So the test statistic is also known as the calculated. Which test statistic are we using? There are several test statistics. We have the W test, the Z test, the U test, the T test, the S test, the chi test, the F test, and so forth. Okay. 
there are several of them, several of these tests that are there for you to be able to sell. But then the one that are usable for this is known as the T test. So we'll be dealing with the T test, T, okay. the T test. That's what we'll be dealing with, the T test. There is a formula in calculating this T test. It's a beautiful, beautiful formula for dealing with it. The T, okay, the T test is given by T test is given by X bar minus mu over S over the square root of N. That is a formula for the T test that we'll be using for this course. This is for small sample size. This is for small sample size. And small sample size are those that are less than 30. Those that are less than 30. Of course, everything inside this formula is are things that you know already. You know that from the information content that you have here. Okay. So if you look there, the first one you have is X bar. The value of X bar was what? You substitute and solve it. X bar is 4,900 minus mu, which is 5,000, divided by S. S is the standard deviation. S is a standard deviation, and this was 280 divided by the square root of N, and N is 26. So yours is to just take your calculator and don't make the mistake of dividing 4,900 minus 5,000 is 100. So that one is 100. And the temptation is that you divide the negative 100 by 280, that's wrong, that's wrong, okay? Don't do that. Rather go and solve what is down here first. 280 divided by the square root of 26 first. Whatever answer you do, you come and now divide the negative 100 by that answer. And when you do that, when you calculate the way you're supposed to calculate, you're gonna get a value of negative 1.83. In absolute terms, it will be with a bar, 1.82, E2 or E3. It depends on where you were. So this gives you the test statistic. And watch the step two that you wrote. It wasn't only to find the test statistic. By the way, this test statistic is the information that you have gathered. Okay, you are going to put it down. You've got a lot of information, you are going to put it down. That's how you get. Now, the next thing to do is to now compare it with a critical value. The critical value. That's the next thing. The critical value. The critical value is also known as the T tabulated. The T tabulated. Okay. T tab. That's what I normally call it, T-tabulated. The T-tabulated. Now, it's a very simple thing. The critical value is given by T subscript alpha and then N minus one. Okay, T subscript alpha and then N minus one. Now, the value of alpha, we ought to have gotten it here. We said it's a level of significance. And we also said it can be 1%. 5%, 10%. Now, in any preamble, in any storyline like the one we had, if alpha is not known, if alpha is not given, and believe you me, in this storyline, alpha wasn't really given. So if alpha is not given, you assume a default alpha, and the default is always 5%. The default is always 5%. So you have to now assume that the default alpha is five. Come here, you gotta rewrite the whole thing again. And then you have T, okay. You have T subscript 0 0.05, which is a 5%, comma, N, N is 26. N is 26. 
So you have 26 minus one. And your final critical value will be T subscript 0 0.05 and then 25. So this is your critical value. Look at the name. It's also called T tabulated. Tabulated means that you need to get it from where? Tabulated means you've got to get it from where? From where? Roland, where do you get it from? From a table. A table. Where are you getting it from? From a table, sir. Roland, I think you've said your answer, but I can't hear for some reasons. I'm not able to. I'm not the only one you can't hear. Stop Everybody. It. Okay. You can't hear all of us. For some reason. I'm trying to call so, you. Um, if I hear you, all you can do is can Yes, Yapo. Yapo. From a table. Yeah. From a table. I'm sure you're using to, I'm not able to hear. Which my one way or the other be good. It will push most of you to good. Okay. Most of you are saying that you say you can hear yourself. Okay, you guys can hear yourself, but I can't hear you. Oh, that's interesting. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful because what that means is that you have to. Um, you have to type your answer in the chat for me, which is good. It's good when you're typing the answers in the chat. It will, it, will, it will make you not interrupt me the most. Okay. So, so that's good. So just do it that way. All right. So let's go to the table. It means you have to go to the table. That's what it means. And the T table was given to you the last time. Let me show you this table. That's the table. The table has the top part the top black, black, black numbers. And that is referring to the P value as well as the alpha. So the P values and the alpha are the top there. There are two categories of them. You have the one tail numbers, which is a very top, and the one below it are the two tail numbers. You remember I told you that we always deal with the one tail or two tail. So you would have to, please, if you have a question, raise your hand and type your question there in the question. So, you have two tail and then you have one tail. You have two tail and then you have one tail. Now in your, in your analysis, always try and identify which tail you are dealing with, always. And how do you know that which tail you are dealing with? Always look at your hypothesis. And let's go to the hypothesis. And in the hypothesis, the way the hypothesis is structured will tell you whether it's a one tail or it's a two-tail. So looking at this, which one are we dealing with? Looking at the symbol in the hypothesis, the symbol, which one are we dealing with? Is it a one-tail or the two-tail? Type your answer, Kabinopuku. Or you can say it and let's see whether this time I can hear it. Okay. What is your answer? Okay. Some people are typing. Let me see if I can get a good type. Um, what is it? Is it one tail or two tail? Okay, so the right answer is two tail. Okay, two tail. And that is true. Two tail. So now that we know that we are dealing with a two tail, when you go to the table, you don't have to cry. You just look for the two tail. So whatever answer we are looking for, we are going to get the answer at the two tail section here. That's what you're going to do. Okay. Now, so we need to know our alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. So we have to look at the two tail and then select 0 0.05. Have you got it? Okay, I'm sure you got it. Search for 0 0.05 two tail. Get it. And then according to our critical value, look at it there. Okay, you match that 0 0.05 with the 25 degrees of freedom. Now the 25 here, the n minus one is called the degrees of freedom, DF. D for dog, L for first truck. Okay. So in your table, look for the last column, the, the first column on your left. You will see that there is a DF written there. That's the degrees of freedom. So you will identify 25. Have you got that 25? Excellent. I'm sure you got it. Okay. Now that you've gotten the value 25, match that with the p value of 0 0.052 tail. So move to the right. Once you get a 25, be moving to the right. 
whilst your eye is on the top there. And then see where they meet. Type the answer down for me. That is the value of the critical value. Whatever answer you get there, that is a critical value. Where that degrees of freedom of 24, 25 will meet the, the alpha level of 5% of 0, 0.0. What value did you get? Okay. Whilst others, some are typing wrong answers, some are typing correct answers. Okay. So I've gotten just two numbers and, uh, and I need to be sure which is the correct one. So I need more answers. What is your answer for the critical value? And the right answer is 2.06. I think majority of you have gotten it correctly. Okay. So with that in mind, 2.06. So you go to your answer there, and then you write equal to, equal to 2.06. So our critical value is 2.06. And our cap is 1.82. And let me tell you now, decision time. And by the way, once you've gotten your calculated, which is a 1.282, and you've also gotten your tabulated, the critical value, which is 2.06, you compare. And this is a decision rule. This is a decision rule. Any question? Okay, so some of you says you can't hear me. You can't hear me, so I need to be sure that you can't hear me or you can hear me. Okay. What could be the possible reason why you cannot hear me? Is it better now? or still you cannot hear me. I need to be sure. Roland, Roland said he can't hear me. So is that the case for every one of you? Is it that all of you cannot hear me or is only Roland who cannot hear me? We can hear you. Okay, Pabno Poku can hear me. Okay. Abigail is not sure. Okay. Dog is on and off. Um, majority of you can hear me. So if you can't hear me, don't worry. You can, you get a recording. So no problem at all. Okay. Other than that, there will be too much interruptions. And uh, once it is a general problem, then I need to do something about it. But it appears that majority are fine. Majority are fine. So those who can't hear me, you can log out and log back in. So we are going to do a decision time. The decision to conclude on the hypothesis. Okay. This is a decision rule. What I'm about to give you is known as a decision rule. It's a rule. It's a rule. So we have to abide by the rule. And the rule says this, okay. the decision rule. What does it say? The decision rule says, it says that reject the null hypothesis. And write it down. Reject the null hypothesis if the calculated value is always greater or equal to the tabulated value. Reject the null hypothesis if the calculated value is greater or equal to the tabulated value. Okay. Reject the null hypothesis if the calculated is greater than or equal to the tabulated. So what is our calculated value? Our calculated value is 1.82. That is it. Our calculated is 1.82. What is our tabulated? Our tabulated value is 2.06. The rule says that if the calculated is greater than the tabulated, then reject the null hypothesis. Now, you can clearly see that the calculated is 1.82 and it's not greater than the tabulated of 2.06. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis at this 5% level of significance. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. 
Now, when you say we cannot reject the null hypothesis, come to the null hypothesis and make sense of what it is that you are saying you cannot reject. You can't reject what? You can't reject the null. What is the null saying? The null is saying that the mean turnover is 5,000, so by the SME. You cannot reject that. So what is your conclusion? What is your conclusion? Well, the conclusion is that the mean turnover is truly, and indeed, okay, 5,000. And so nothing prevents you now from buying the SME. Nothing, absolutely nothing prevents you from buying the SME. Let me take you through how we did this calculation, which is all in your slides. Everything is in there. At the T, calculated at 1.32, which is less than T tabulated of 1, 2.06. Okay. We cannot reject the null hypothesis at a 5% alpha level of significance. And then conclude that a weekly is indeed 5%. So, conclusion. You see, conclus the conclusion has to be practical now at this stage. Nothing prevents you from buying the SME. Um, Joseph, if you have a question, you can type in there because when you talk, I cannot hear. You. Okay, your hand is up. So if you check. So nothing prevents you, nothing at all prevents you from buying this SME. So go ahead and buy it. So this is a way of calculating and coming out with a conclusion based on an approach called the critical value approach. Now, the critical value approach is just comparing the test statistic and the critical value. And the decision rule is what I gave you. Okay. So you can use this critical value approach to conclude with your final situation. That is not all. You can also conclude with the p-value approach. Okay, someone says I should go over the decision rule. So the decision rule says that, this is a decision rule. The rule says that always you are going to reject the null hypothesis if and only if the calculated is bigger or equal to the tabulated. Only if the calculated is bigger than the tabulated. Now the calculated is this value here, okay? That is the, 1.82, that is a calculated. We have done that already, we have it. It is 1.82. If it is bigger, if it is bigger than the tabulated, you reject the null hypothesis. Now, look at the tabulated. The tabulated is 2.06, 2.06, 2 So this calculated is not bigger than the tabulated. It's not, it's not at all. And so we cannot reject the null hypothesis. We can't reject the null hypothesis. Now, what did the null hypothesis say? The null hypothesis said that this 5,000 is the weekly turnover. You see, the mean turnover is 5,000. That's what the null says. We are not rejecting it. We are not rejecting that. We are going with that. And so now we can't reject that. And if we can't reject that, then we conclude that truly the mean turnover is 5,000. And we know that the storyline indicated that if it is 5,000, you will buy the SME. So you got to understand the storyline. And now that we are concluding that it is indeed 5,000, then it means that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, that's where the conclusion is at the bottom here. Nothing prevents you, truly speaking, nothing prevents you from buying this SME. You are good to go because you didn't reject the null hypothesis. We said that go ahead and buy. You couldn't reject it. You couldn't reject it. And we will come and see later on that because you made a lot of mistakes in your work. You can't reject what a guy is saying. Okay. So that is a critical value approach. Let's look at the next approach, the final approach, which is known as the p-value approach. So the critical value approach simply compares the calculated with the tabulator. Now let's go to the p-value. The p-value approach, okay, the p-value approach compares the p-value with that of the alpha level, the level of significance. 
Now, the alpha level, we don't have to go far because we already know the value to be 0 0.05. So that one is settled. The only thing we got to battle it with now is the p-value. And finding the p-value is a beautiful exercise. Now, put this point down. Always, always use the test statistic. And the test statistic is a calculated. Okay, that is a calculated. That's the one you calculate, which was 1.82. Always use the test statistic to find the p-value. That's your rule for you. It's not a decision, but it's a trick you need to know to find the p-value. Note that point, it's a very, very important thing. Use the test statistic to get the p-value. Okay. Now, we know that this is the value of the test statistic. Okay. So how, how are we going to use this value to get the p-value? It's simple. You take this value of 1.82, which is a test statistic, you go and drop it into the swimming pool of the table. Now, let me show you the swimming pool of the table. The table has got plenty numbers, apart from the edges. So the numbers are the edges. Those are the numbers that you know of. Okay. The numbers are the edges. Those are the ones that you know of. But those numbers that are not on the edges, okay, they are for the value numbers. So the numbers inside, all the plenty numbers, if you check carefully, you might not know, but they have been organized in a kind of a beautiful way that you can follow their organization. Now, you are going to search for the test statistic inside this swimming pool. Let me test, look for the Remember, the value is 1.82. So you're going to search for 1.82 throughout this whole space. All of the space here, you're going to search for or two numbers closest to 1.82. So you're going to search for 1.82 or two numbers closest to it. Now you can see that on the far left, on the bit left here, it's all zero, 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 zero. So it starts climbing, it starts climbing, it starts climbing. And you will finally get to know that the two numbers closest to 1.82 are here, are here. Okay. I don't want you to think too far. They are there because 1.812 and 1.833. These are the two numbers closest to 1.82. And usually, if there are two of them, then one should be on top of the other. One should be on top of the other. And in this case, one is on top of the other. Well, the numbers here are not what you are interested in. These numbers are rather going to help you to find the pivot. Now that you got the two numbers, what do you do? Look up. Once you got the two numbers, look up. Once you got the two numbers, look vertically up and pick those numbers that are the p-values on top of it, the black ones. Okay. This one or that one, one of them is your p-value. Okay. One of these two is your p-value. One of these two is your p-value. This one here is your possible two p-value and this one here is your possible one. Who can tell me which one should be the p-value and why? Unfortunately, you can't talk. Okay? Who can tell me which one should be the p-value and why? Roland, your answer is wrong. Okay. Interestingly, you sent it to me privately, so that's good. Okay. But that's wrong. Okay. Which one is a p-value? Who can tell me? Type which one is the p-value. Is it 0 0.05? or 0 0.10, and why? Of course, by the, by, by, if you give me the right answer, probably you know why. If you give me the right answer, then probably you have a why, why you said a why. Okay. So which one is the answer? Which one is the answer? And the answer is supposed to be 0 0.10. Okay, I got somebody give me the answer. 0 0.10, because you are dealing with a two-tail. Throughout this example, you are dealing with a two-tail. And once you are dealing with a two-tail, then it means you take the two-tail. 
You see, always at the top there, remember that you always have a two-tail answer and you have a one-tail answer. And once you have identified that it's a two-tail answer you are dealing with, you can see clearly that then that is what you'll be dealing with. So the answer is 10%. The p-value finally is 10%. So you will write your answer down and you say that p-value, okay, is equal to 0.1. Alpha, you know it to be 0 0.05. Now let me give you the decision rule for the p-value approach. And it's the same thing as that, it's like say an opposite. The decision rule is that rejects the null hypothesis if and only if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. Reject the null hypothesis if and only if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So ladies and gentlemen, are we going to reject the null hypothesis looking at this storyline or we are not going to reject the null hypothesis? Who can tell me? Are we going to reject the null hypothesis or we cannot reject an hypothesis. Reject or don't reject. What is your focus? Are you going to reject it or you're not going to reject? Type your answer for me. Reject the null hypothesis or don't reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis or don't reject the null hypothesis. Your colleagues are saying it, so say something. Don't wait for them to say it and then pick one of the answers as yours. Okay. Reject or don't reject. And the answer should be, the majority of you are getting it. It's supposed to be reject. Remember, sorry, it's supposed to be don't reject. Don't reject. Because remember, it says reject only if the p-value is less than alpha. P-value is 10%. Look at it. Okay. P-value is 10%. Alpha is 5%. How can p-value be less than alpha? P-value here is more than alpha. P-value is a mistake you actually make. So you've made too much mistakes. So you can't reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So you cannot. And by the way, for your information, once the critical value approach says you cannot reject the null hypothesis, which is what we had, then the P-value will also say that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. But they will always be moving together. So once again, we cannot reject a null hypothesis. What does that mean? It means once again, nothing prevents you from buying the SME. Okay. Once again, nothing prevents you from. Once again, nothing prevents you from buying the SME. And this is where the answer is. The answer is all captured here. Look at the last sentence. Nothing prevents you. Because the p-value is 10%, it's bigger than the 5% alpha. So nothing. I'm now going to give you some things to work on. Kind of an assignment for you to work on. Or not an assignment, but for you to work on. This is a storyline where you are to find out. Okay. It's a Dufia Sam storyline. You have to calculate the mean. This is the data. You have been told about a statement. Okay. Using that statement, you will be able to know the population mean and the sample mean, which is obtainable from here. The sample standard deviation has been computed for you. Yours is simple. Use the data you have here. The man is claiming that the average yield is at least four of fruit, the tomato. Yours is to check whether the data supports it. It's for you to try your hands on. It's for you to try. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end. That brings us to the end of the entire At this stage, if you have any question, you can ask.